I've been banging on about sustainable building for years. I'm now trying the health angle as a way of getting across to people why it's important that we should have more sustainable buildings. So just to give you an example of the kind of problems that we have, this is a, a newly built house, it's only been up a couple of years. Uh, it happens to be in Northern Ireland. I can't tell you where it is because I need to protect the tenants. Um, but we carry out indoor air quality tests now. We're, we're using a very simple little device which is a pump which samples the air in the building uh, and we can offer these tests for a relatively modest amount of money and this tells you what kind of problems exist in terms of air quality within the, the buildings. Uh, so what we found in this particular house was there were elevated levels of formaldehyde emissions. Formaldehyde is a carcinogen, in other words it can give you cancer uh, and this is quite commonly found in buildings today. Uh, in theory, the formaldehyde should reduce over time, but uh, we're beginning to find evidence that that's not necessarily the case. We also found uh, elevated levels of what are called VOCs. These are volatile organic compounds. There are hundreds of these chemical emissions within buildings which uh, can create health problems. In this case, they were uh, mainly coming from coatings, paints and varnishes and so on. So again, in theory, these should dissipate to some extent, but um, that's not always the case. Um, uh, one of the things I spotted straight away in this house is that increasingly now, uh, kitchen units are covered with PVC. Uh, the PVC next to the cooker is melting uh, with the heat of the cooker, uh, and that's uh, emitting toxic chemicals into the house. Uh, I was also quite surprised to find in this brand new house already uh, moderate levels of mold growth because I actually couldn't see them in the house but when I went back with the test results a few weeks later you could already see the mold becoming apparent uh, in classic position here due to coal bridging um, these were relatively well defined houses but unfortunately the construction industry do still doesn't know how to avoid uh, coal bridging and because these are concrete buildings uh, the mold effectively comes with the building materials and is already present in the house. And very often the tenants are blamed for causing mould, but in this case this was completely impossible because the people had only been in the house for a few weeks, and the, but the mould was already there. It's coming from the building construction. Mould is a really serious problem. It affects health very badly. Uh, there are um, 470,000 people suffering from asthma in Ireland, for instance, a lot of that is down to mould growth in houses. It's also quite common to see uh, the, the problems with uh, dampness uh, in modern buildings. These are houses just a few years old near where I live. Uh, in this case, this is uh, uh, cavities, cavity construction that's been filled with uh, polystyrene beads. Uh, and um, you can see the kind of problems that are happening to do with uh, dampness. A lot of research has been done recently showing that also that uh, many uh, new build buildings do not achieve the levels of energy efficiency that are actually predicted. In fact, numerous studies have shown that uh, uh, buildings only achieve about 30 to 40 percent of the predicted SAP calculations. So this, this adds to the problem because the buildings themselves are not warm enough and not energy efficient enough. Um, one of the problems which I, we're going to be facing in years to come is the obsession with air tightness. We were told everything has to be more airtight and that is leading to buildings being wrapped in plastic. This is very, very bad for indoor air quality and health. Uh, and we're starting to see a lot of examples of problems associated with this. Uh, I'm an opponent of Passive House, even though lots of people seem to think Passive House is a wonderful idea because uh, it's an extreme form of air tightness and we are finding a lot of evidence of health problems in passive house buildings. Uh, I think it's very worrying that local authorities in Ireland are considering making passive house compulsory. It's a big mistake uh, and I support the Irish government that is trying to find ways of avoiding this policy being, uh, being forced on people. We, we need to look at different methods of building. So, so serious are these problems that we, they, 
uh, a research council in England has funded uh, the HEMAC network. Uh, this is a, a network of scientists looking at health effects of modern airtight construction because there's so many problems associated with this and we're looking at how we can improve strategies for ventilation and also construction to avoid these kinds of problems. Um, there are a number of other groups as well working on indoor air quality. There's a UK indoor environment group which has its annual conference in Coventry tomorrow. The other problem with airtight buildings is it traps the volatile chemical compounds in buildings inside the buildings and they do not get released as quickly as, as would have been the case in the past. And so we, the one way to avoid and reduce these problems is to reduce the number of petrochemical based materials that we use in buildings. These are sort of typical materials that, uh, that, are, uh, that are based on petrochemicals which lead to toxic emissions. Now, it's, I don't have the time today to go into this in proper detail. I have to do a whole day workshop to explain it all. Uh, and even the book, which has got uh, 12 chapters dealing with this issue, only manages to get to grips with, with the problems, but hopefully will provide a useful introduction to the difficulties. Just examples of the kind of materials which are commonly used in buildings. Polyurethane foam, it's made from isocyanates. Isocyanates are classified by the World Health Organization as a highly dangerous uh, compound, and yet these are widely used in buildings. Uh, isocyanates are derived from phosgene, which uh, you probably know phosgene is a mustard gas. Formaldehyde also uh, is very common, and there are a lot of chemicals used in buildings that are what are known as endocrine disruptors. These are things that actually affect reproduction uh, and affect genetics and they're particularly dangerous for babies and young children. So uh, I promote the use of alternative, non-petrochemical based, natural, renewable, non-toxic materials. This is the way we ought to build. So these are a couple of uh, very, very low energy houses that we've uh, done in North Wales, which are built using wood fiber construction. Here's uh, uh, an example of uh, wood fiber uh, boards being used in a renovation project in, in Dublin. I don't know how easily you can see these pictures, but uh, um, and uh, these kind of materials are now readily available here. They're not unusual or difficult to get hold of. Sheet wool insulation is another very interesting material because it's natural, it's non-toxic, and it's also capable of absorbing formaldehyde. So if you have a problem with formaldehyde in a building, then the sheet will, will actually absorb the formaldehyde and uh, turn it into a, a, a less dangerous material. I, I'm on the board of Nature Plus, which is a European-wide organization which promotes the use of environmentally friendly, non-toxic, non-hazardous uh, materials. And about 250 building products are certified by Nature Plus. Uh, if you're fortunate enough to live in Germany or Austria, uh, the government there subsidizes the use of these materials. So in Austria, for instance, they have the Bau book, which uh, is a, a, a listing of materials. And if you use those materials, then you get special assistance from the government. Uh, I'm largely associated with the development of hempcrete, which is another natural, renewable, and um, extremely environmentally friendly material, which we've been working on for a number of years. Um, and. Uh, Hemp is something that we're hoping to we're hoping to run a conference about hemp in Ireland uh, in the autumn uh, because there's a growing interest now in growing and processing hemp, um, not for smoking I should say. This is for use in buildings. Uh, our uh, we built a hemp tree house in our garden, which was listed as one of the top ten eco houses in in the UK, uh, and it, this is actually available as a holiday cottage. So if you want to experience uh, being in a hemp creek building and the better air quality that it gives you, uh, then you can come and stay in our cottage. It's been used in social housing. This is a hemp creek project in Northern Ireland. And we've been doing workshops about hemp creek all over the world, uh, in Canada and Holland and South Africa. And recently, last year, I was involved in building a hemp creek soup kitchen in Kailicha Township in, in Cape Town. So we're spreading it all over the world. Uh, hempcrete has been adopted by mainstream 
organisations. You've got uh, Marks and Spencers have built a superstore with it, which uh, they are absolutely delighted about the energy savings that this has resulted. This building is 40% more e efficient than any of their other energy efficient stores. And the food and wine storage industry have adopted hempcrete because they've discovered that not only does it maintain a constant temperature without the need for cooling or heating, but it also maintains uh, excellent humidity levels in the building. There are also educational buildings built with hempcrete, and it's also a fantastic material for renovation uh, of, of old buildings. This is from a, a project where hempcrete has been used and listed Georgian houses in Bristol. Uh, we've, I've been working on a project in Dublin um, called the Rediscovery Centre, the Wiser Life Building. Uh, if, you, if you're familiar with Ballymun, you'll know where the, the big chimney is in, in Ballymun. Uh, and this is the old boiler house, which has been converted uh, into an environmental education centre, uh, which should be open in, in the late autumn. Here we've been uh, putting uh, hempcrete walls into the building. Uh, these are being cast by a, a local company who, who become experts in how to do hempcrete. And here you can see the hempcrete walls under construction uh, and um, there's going to be a timber cladding on, on the outside of here which is why you've got uh, exposed timber there to fix the timber cladding to. So this building will be open to the public so you'll be able to come and see hempcrete. And as far as I know this is the first time that hempcrete has been used uh, in a public building in Ireland. So if you want to contact me, it's my email address. Uh, we've got a, a conference on health and housing in Belfast uh, in, at the end of September. And uh, as I say, uh, do take one of my cards. If you're interested in hempcrete, there's a block of hempcrete sitting on the table here, which you can come and, uh, come and fondle, if you like, at the coffee break, and then you can see what it's like. Thanks very much.